Father, fill us with the Holy Spirit and with your glory. Fill us now, Lord, with the word, the spirit. Fill us, Father, restore our souls, we pray, for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please be seated. And uh, what a lovely sweetness of the presence of the Lord there is with us tonight. It's so wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for participating and joining in and being part of this. This is why it's wonderful to join in with what the Holy Spirit is doing. So, um, you, Can you open your Bibles, please, to Psalm 23? Psalm 23. I think the mic might be booming a little bit again tonight. Um, let's just... Psalm 23. Some of you might have got this on your sheet. I give it a sheet as well in front of us. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And uh, we're looking tonight just at the theme of healing and restoration. Uh, last night, if the word for last night was the word repent, the word tonight is come. Come. And actually, I wanted to just kick off with that scripture as well, just from that we had prayed over tonight from Matthew 11. Just turn to Matthew 11. And I want you to memorize this, this Bible verse. Matthew 11, verse 28. You probably know it already. Matthew eleven twenty eight. It says, come to me. All who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For my yoke is, for I, sorry, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I love that passage of scripture. There's something to do, which is to come. There's, there's something to leave, which is the burdens with Jesus. There's something to receive, which is um, the rest of God. And I, and I love it. It mentions rest twice in that passage. It actually says, I will give you rest. So that's the grace gift of God. God's going to give us rest. But it also says we can find rest. We can discover rest, which is wonderful. And we discover that through the yoke of Jesus the light yoke that Jesus wants us to have, uh, you know, and, and that's, that is what God wants to give us. The calling, the ministries, the anointings, the giftings of the Holy Spirit are the yoke of Jesus on the church uh, to, to bring the gospel to the nations. And he calls us to do that with rest and with love and with coming to him. And as I came in tonight, I, I think um, I, I just... Something in my spirit reminded me of a quote from Martin Lloyd-Jones. He, he said, uh, I won't get this 100%, but he said, 99.9% .9 of all our troubles as Christians is that we are ignorant of God. And he said, oh, that we had some conception of him, the glory of God, the awesomeness of God. And I think that's so true, isn't it? So often when we go wrong, so often when we struggle, is that we somehow lost sight of Jesus, we somehow lost sight of God, and when He comes back into focus, that's why that beautiful chorus, you know, turn your eyes on Jesus, look full in His wonderful face. The things of the earth will go strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace, and and I think that's where so much rest and restoration and healing comes from is actually seeing God as God really is, and getting that right view of God in our lives 
And then we know we can trust him. We know we can wait on him. We know that he is faithful and true. That's why worship is such an antidote to anxiety and fear. Because it puts God back in the center. And as we look at this theme of rest, of, of coming to Christ, coming, come to me, all you who are weary. I want us to remember it's to Jesus that we come. Because I think one of, again, the, related to that, I've, I've found that, uh, that, that it's the coming to me, he says. Jesus said, come to me. And I can theorize and I can intellectualize and I can get all sorts of, you know, alternatives, if you like, rather than him. It's really him, it's Jesus that we need. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. And that's why I think these worship times we're having are really special because I believe we're not just singing songs, we're not just going through the motions, we're really coming to Christ. And so um, tonight, as we reflect honestly, and we need that restoration, that refreshing, these times of refreshing, we need that in our souls. We need to come to Christ because uh, we are weary, because we are burdened, because we are heavy laden, and he will give us rest. And as I ref reflected honestly for me, you know, I was thinking how for me, much of the time, and I really appreciate Natasha's testimony tonight because I can relate to that distraction and that feeling of weakness through much of the pandemic, that, that sense of inadequacy. I'm just going to share a few things I have found for me that what I think may resonate for a number of us. Tiredness. Anybody felt weary and tired and drained? Kind of empty? We feel like there's so much emptiness uh, through that process that we've been through. Overwhelmed at times as well. Um, sometimes uh, disconnected from, what, from others um, and drained and disappointed. And the struggle, you know, I have my own struggles, you have yours, I have mine. I have perfectionism sometimes. <laughs> Stress, what was that from there? <laughs> from one of my staff members. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it's so true. It's so true. Uh, it's there. I've got the badge. I've got every, you know, perfectionism, stress, um, and uh, you know that sort of fear of letting people down, and so many things that just pull us down and pull us away from the Lord Jesus and stop us coming to Him and start us looking in on ourselves. Uh, we've all been there where we just look at ourselves and we don't like always what we see. And that's why, you know, Heather brought that word in Psalm 42 on Sunday. Where can I go to meet with God? You know, my soul cries out, where can I go to meet with God? And we've got all of this baggage around us, inadequacy, fear, disappointment, disillusionment. Uh, in all sorts of things. And then we're also praying, Lord, how can I meet with you in the midst of all of this? Um, and it re just reminds me that our souls need to be restored by the Lord. And that's why he says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest, Jesus says. And uh, it's, it's the depth that we're willing to go to in Jesus. And that's why I want to just briefly look at this psalm, and then I'm going to invite us to come and respond and just receive prayer. Because one of the things that I've mourned over lockdown is the lack of laying on of hands and praying for one another that we can be restored and refreshed. And there's something wonderful about ministry in the Holy Spirit that just fills us up with Jesus. So we're going to give plenty of time for that. But do look at the Psalm 23. And as we look at this, it's like, for me, it's like waves on the seashore. Each, each sentence is like a fresh wave of the rest of God coming in and, and sort of lapping up over your soul. And just so as we just look through some of these sentences, I'm going to only skim the surface, but it is like the sea coming in. And um, each sentence 
Through each sentence, Jesus is saying, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. So it says, the Lord is my shepherd. So personal, I shall not want. And in the New Testament, it speaks three times of the shepherd. It says in John 10, Jesus is the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. It tells us in Hebrews 13 that Jesus is the great shepherd of the sheep. And that's speaking of his resurrection, that Jesus is alive. He's the great shepherd. I love it. It goes from good to great. <laughs> he died the good shepherd. He's risen the great shepherd. And actually then also in 1 Peter 5, Jesus is revealed as the chief shepherd. And that's connected to him returning again. Jesus is coming again. And these things are so important for us to be restored in our souls, to remember Jesus died for me, Jesus rose for me, and he's coming again for me. And, and that, that, that's like getting either side of the battery and getting recharged right there through the gospel. Uh, the, uh, G, the Lord is my shepherd. He's my good shepherd, my chief shepherd, my great shepherd and my chief shepherd. And that's so encouraging that the Lord, and he's inviting us to, he says, come to me, the good shepherd. Come to me, the great shepherd, the chief shepherd. He is altogether wonderful. He says, he makes me to lie down in green pasture. Uh, I don't know if you know that actually if you were to go into Israel, um, the green pasture they're talking about doesn't look green it's actually, um, it probably looks like a desert. You'd be thinking the sheep were eating rocks, actually, instead of grass. But, it, but it's still called the green pasture because there is still, because in the, there's the dew and then in the evening there's the moisture in the atmosphere that still causes um, the, the shoots to grow up here and there. And the wonderful thing here is, this isn't the Yorkshire Dales green. This is more like uh, what's really being said with he leads me in green pasture is that the shepherd leads the sheep where there is always enough. It's never that they are so full, full to bursting because we know that, don't we, in our Christian life. Jesus gives us enough, da our daily bread. He gives us our daily bread. He doesn't make us greedy and fill us up for the week. He gives us our daily bread. And that's what the green pasture is, daily bread. Uh, Jesus has enough for today for you. And when, by his grace, you wake up tomorrow, there will still be enough tomorrow. That was the lesson they learned with the manna in the wilderness, in the water, that Jesus would give them enough for the day. And, uh, and there was always enough, supernaturally. He says, he leads me beside still waters. And I love it. It's not, this isn't a rushing stream. This isn't some sort of noisy, you know, waterfall. This is calm, still, quiet waters. And we need that place of calm and quietness and waiting. There was a lovely sweetness on that word tonight about waiting on the Lord. And that's the still, the, 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 he leads me beside still waters. Be still, my soul. Be still and know that I am God. And, the, and, and we need the stillness in our lives to be restored. And I, I say this as a person, you know, you probably all know I'm not, I'm a busy person. I, I get on with things. And I, but it is important to be still. He leads me beside still waters. And that water, that refreshing water. Um, I'm doing a lot of writing at the moment about the water of scripture that's being saturated with God and the whole theme of water in scripture is rich Jesus talks about being the living water and he is the water uh, it says there he restores my soul he binds us up he heals us he comforts us he strengthens us um, and remember, each of these phrases, Jesus is inviting us to come to him. If we want that restoration, we come to him. You know, it says in Psalm 30, verse 11, he turns my mourning into dancing. He lifts my sorrow. Isn't that beautiful? He restores my soul. Jesus, Jesus lifts our sorrow. He binds us up. He comforts us. 
In Joel 2, it says that he restores the years the locusts have eaten. Sometimes we can get fret, uh, anxious about having been away from the Lord or whatever, and we're, you know, it, it can be hard to come back to the Lord because we feel that sort of sense of shame of having been away from him. Well, you know what? Jesus can restore what's been lost. He can restore the years the locusts have eaten. Um, and in 1 Peter 5, it also speaks about, you know, after you've suffered a little while, that the Lord will restore you and make you strong and steadfast. That's 1 Peter 5.10. But he restores my soul. I think that's such a rich phrase, and it's one of those rich sentences of Scripture you just want to chew over. Uh, if, you, if you sense that your soul is empty, if you feel that, if you know your soul is in need of refreshing, it does as good to just meditate on that scripture. He restores my soul. And hear Jesus saying to you, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He leads me in paths of righteousness. Um, and here are, here are path, these are paths of love. These are paths of rest. I want to say, as we are restored as well, I believe these are paths of fellowship. And I want to encourage us, when we are feeling on empty, to get into fellowship and share what's going on in your heart. Because God uses one another to restore our souls as well. We need to be honest with one another. We need to be real with one another and vulnerable and open and say, I need, I need help. I, I'm on empty, I'm struggling, uh, I'm disconnected. Whatever it might be, get into fellowship. It's, a, it's one of the paths of righteousness. Another path of righteousness is Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work. Um, and uh, we must... Uh, we've, we've, we've attempted this a lot in our family and had ups and downs with it, but it's so good. I don't talk about a day off. We talk about a Sabbath rest, and we seek to work from rest rather than rest from work. The Sabbath is such a holy, such a holy discipline. Uh, it's a path of righteousness. If you want to restore your soul, Give a day to God and rest and be replenished and be restored through the rest that God would give to you there. And then also a path of righteousness is the path of prayer and intimacy with God. And, and I think that's one of the biggest places where we do get distracted, if we're honest. And, and none of us have got this sorted. I get distracted I'm sure if I was to ask for a show of hands, we would all say yes. We get distracted by one thing and another. Um, but that sh that I want to encourage us, don't let the distraction be the story. You know, just get back on and say, Lord, lead me to intimacy with you. Uh, the, the, the still waters of the presence of God in prayer, the intimacy, that connection with our Father who loves us, is indispensable in the Christian life. And it's indispensable for someone to be restored. You can't be restored in your soul just from theology. It, it doesn't work. Just head knowledge won't do it. We need the encounter with Jesus in prayer and in worship and the connection with him. These are the paths of righteousness. And we sometimes we have to slow down in order to find the paths of righteousness. It's not the motorway of righteousness, it's the path of righteousness. And, um, and it says, for his name's sake, and I love this because God connects this to his glory. This is not just about us, it's about him as well. He wants us to walk in paths of righteousness for his glory alone. And there's such wisdom. Maybe one of the things that I, I believe, obviously we need gifts we need fruit but my goodness we need the wisdom of the holy spirit today how should we therefore live in the day in which we're in this day in this time how do we live a life of 
discipleship. Caroline and I, we sometimes talk about this. How, how should we live? Are we living in that way? What changes might we need to make to live in the paths of righteousness? Because that's the path of rest and restoration. It says there, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and it's lovely that it's walk through, not stay in. So let's come out of the valley as well as we might have a valley, but let's come out of it. And it's the valley of the shadow of death, or a better translation would be of darkness. It's the valley of darkness. And we have all, I'm sure, experienced darkness in our lives. And if we haven't, we will. But we can be confident of God's presence. And it says your rod, in other words, the, the guiding hand of the shepherd, and your staff, in other words, the protection of the shepherd for the sheep. Guidance and protection, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Through the darkness, God's guidance will be there. And it doesn't feel like it, but it is the promise of God. And we've been through collectively a time of darkness. But Jesus is with us, guiding us and leading us. Uh, and it's wonderful. Come to me. Let's, let's allow this Wonder, this Matthew scripture to relate to the psalm, you know, when we're going through the valley of the shadow of death, we need to come to Christ. His rod, his guidance, his staff. Jesus is protecting us even when we are in the trial and in the, the pain of that moment. God will comfort if we come to him. And here then in the psalm, we leave the valley behind. The picture of the valley moves to one side and the picture of a table that is set before us comes on the scene. And I think this is so beautiful. You know, if you set, that God would set the table for you. How many of us set the table for someone tonight? But Jesus sets the table for you. And I think this is so beautiful that he sets, he sets an extravagant table for us. And, and it says, in the presence of my enemies, and that's often been a puzzle to me, but I think the way that I would think of this is he sets a table of abundance before us and, the, and, and no matter what, the enemy can't take it off you. <laughs> the devil will not be able to take that banquet from you that Jesus has set for you if you come to him. If we keep coming to Christ, there will be a banquet. There will be a table set of provision and of abundance for us. Uh, so let's keep coming to Jesus. Uh, it says there, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. That's one of my favorite sentences in, this, in Psalm 23. My cup overflows. In other words, there's so much Holy Spirit. <laughs> um, and that's one of the other things that I'd love us to just remember. Uh, there's no lack of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is so mighty and so plentiful and abundant. There's enough. There's more than enough. My cup overflows. There's talking of the oil of the, the, the Holy Spirit. There's so much of the Spirit to, be, to know and to be had. That's why it reminded me when I reflected on this of during scenes of revival, and I've spoken to people who've experienced revival, one of the things they say is that God is everywhere. <laughs> the, the presence of God is everywhere. Now, and that just reminds me of my cup overflows. That's why, that's where we get this thing of being saturated with God. God is everywhere. And God is everywhere here in this psalm. Everything's pointing back to him, which is why I think the devil loves to deceive us into thinking Jesus isn't really enough. You need Jesus plus. <laughs> you need the gospel plus something else. But actually, I believe that the psalm would tell us that, the, that the, what's in here is enough for us. My cup overflows. You see, uh, God is everywhere here. We've had the shepherd of the sheep. We've had God is the, um, uh, the guide for the traveler. He's the host for the guest. He's everywhere in this psalm. And then it closes by saying, surely goodness 
and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The goodness is there for my needs. The mercy is there for my failures. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There's time and eternity there. It's so encompassing. It's so, God has thought of everything. <laughs> and he covers us in every way imaginable. He's before us, behind us, to our left, to our right, above and below. We are completely surrounded by the grace of God. Isn't that wonderful? And, and somehow, when we take our eyes off him, we, we get into these places I spoke of earlier, of disillusionment, of tiredness, of disappointment, of being drained, and, and so many of these things. And I just want to encourage us that he can restore our souls. And that all we need to do tonight, and we're going to pray in just a second, in this time of refreshing evening, is so simple. It's just to come. That's what I said at the beginning. Come, come. That's the whosoever will, come. To the thirsty, come. The spirit and the bride say come. They're talking about Jesus there. But the, Bi the Bible's full of this invitation. Come. Come to Christ. Come and be filled if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Uh, that's what Jesus said, and, and uh, that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to come to Jesus for refreshing, for healing, for restoration in, in our souls. Amen? And it's so, it's so wonderful. Uh, so let's do that now. Let's stand, and if I can ask the worship team to come forward and...